Hello viewers and welcome to a brand new episode of Lancer 101, Dustgrave, a Lancer first party supplement, is out, so let's talk about the talents that come with it. Number 36, Field Analyst, is apparently a talent where you use your super analytical intelligence to come up with strategies on the spot, but in practice, it's just leader for shooting. Rank 1, Tactical Intelligence, whenever an ally in line of sight missed, you know how much they missed by, you also get a reaction called superior intelligence, in which for twice per round, you can just add one to attack roll done by your allies. Combine both of the effects together, and you can easily turn a near miss to hit, and a 19 attack roll to immediately crit, you can essentially add plus 5% accuracy to any allied attack roll, as long as it's in line of sight. Rank 2, Information Handling, you now have an intel dice that starts at 1, at the end of your turn, if you didn't perform any hostile action except scanning, the dice increases by 2, when you use superior intelligence reaction, you may add the intel dice value to the attack roll instead of just 1, then the dice resets, the dice also resets at the end of the scene. This talent would have been just a near identical copy of leader if it wasn't for this, rank 2 of this talent would be rather difficult to use for anyone that isn't going for a support roll, but potentially adding a 3 or 5 or even 6 to an attack roll can be an insane advantage when you really want that attack to hit or crit. Rank 3, Active Interference, whenever an hostile in line of sight hit, you know what they rolled, you may also use superior intelligence against them, but this time, you subtract their roll instead. Again, heavy similarity with leader here, except potentially causing an attack to not crit or even miss can be an even bigger advantage than just damage reduction, more so when there's enemies that can get more damage upon critting like goddamn Ronin. In conclusion, this talent just makes your allies hit more often and enemies miss more often, combining this with leader can be very powerful to say the least, but you might be lacking in reaction to use with this talent around, twice per round can be quite an investment. Number 37, Prospector, you become a dwarf, that's all I can say. Rank 1, Stake a Claim, you now have a once per scene quick action called Create Entrance, where you create entrance, specifically, a burst 1 entrance that you can tunnel to any 5 space then create another burst 1 opening there, this lasts until the end of the scene, also, you can't take any reaction until end of the current turn because you were busy digging. When completely within the entrance, you and your allies gain the subterranean reposition reaction which can be used once per round on your turn, I repeat, on your turn only, to immediately just tunnel through and pop up on the other side. Despite the silliness, this can be a powerful mobility support aid for slower allies to reach somewhere quickly, kinda like a more physical version of Accelerate. Rank 2, Gold Fever, Hostile within the entrance need to pass a hull save or immediately trip, also, when you create entrance, allies that are also standing right in the newly created entrance can immediately use subterranean reposition even when it's not their turn. Basically, good news, hostile now has to be wary of going near your hull, and you can also immediately get the entire team out of possible danger if they are standing next to you, and honestly, the bigger you are, the better, because the entrance is now bigger. Rank 3, Mother Load. Oh hey I haven't heard that one in a long while, create entrance is now once per round and you may use it an additional time each scene. Does this mean it's twice per scene, because that would be a bit easier to read, also all entrances are now connected for the purposes of tunneling, which is, well, this. Basically, while this talent seems like it's making you into a dwarf, in reality you are just morphing into Sunza with tunnel based teleporting, Having all entrances being connected means you can go from one side of the map to another if there's entrances on both sides of it, which has absurdly powerful application. In short, if you are lacking in height and mobility, well you aren't lacking in one of those now. Number 38, Iconoclast, it's just more NHP bullshit. Rank 1, Transgression, you may now equip your mech with an unstable NHP, that's literally what it is called, why the hell do you think this is a good idea, however, the one thing that makes this seems like a good idea is that this unstable NHP doesn't count towards the AI limit, which mean if you also get Technophile and Lesson of Shaping, you can shove 4 NHP into your mech, that sounds very crowded. This NHP also gives you a quick action called Mimetic Spark, which for once per round, zap someone in range 3 for 1 AP energy damage, which doesn't sound like much but then the damage also get increased by 1 for every onboard NHP, including this one so minimum you can deal 2 damage and at max, you can deal 5, and considering it's armor piercing and also unmissable, that's very powerful when you need damage like right now. Rank 2, Transmutation, after performing any action granted to you by an NHP, any NHP, 
except handling control of the mech to them, you may immediately perform transmutting spark as a free action, which project a line 3 lightning that can zap people of your choice for 2 AP energy, and each NHP can trigger this once per round. Basically, more free damage, just from using your NHP, what's not to love? Rank 3, Transcension, you gain Transcendence dice, which is a D3 interestingly that started at 3, just use your D6 and have the number, when you use Transmutting Spark, reduce the dice by 1, when the dice is at 1, you may immediately enter a Transcendent state, resetting the dice back to 3, this form, which lasts till the end of the next turn, gain the following effects. 1. Your Transcendence dice doesn't get decreased, 2. Mimetic Spark gains plus 4 damage and plus 5 range, 3. Unless flying or climbing, you are forced to permanently hover one space over the surface, and 4. You gain immunity to involuntary movement. When you cascade and lose control of the mech, the mech also enter transcendent state for the duration, with the cascading NHP having access to the benefits of this talent for better or worse, the transcendence dice also reset at the end of the scene. In short, this talent is almost pure damage all the way with the side of insanity, and also an abject lesson for why you should not put an unstable NHP into a fully functional mechanized chassis. But it's not like you are gonna listen to me on this so whatever, anyway, that's all for now, and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.